Hi, this is Mark from Skywagon University. We're going to be doing a uh, flight review and a little bit of a walk around and talk about a 1946 Navion. So in 46, they were North American, made by the same company as the P-51 Mustang, and they changed to Ryan a, little, a few years later after selling about 111, 1,100 of them. This one is in a pretty advanced state of uh, decay and neglect and needs to be restored. The only maintenance it's had in the last 30 years is a new barrel full of water to stop it tipping backwards on its tie down. So we're going to try an app called Aircraft Restoration. You should get it. Check this out. First time using it. So settings, Aircraft Restoration, Restore. Three days later, with my app, I've been having progress reports and it should be being delivered any time now. So let's put settings, restoration complete, engage. There it is. Now, let's talk about that. It's much nicer now. So, it looks like the app worked pretty well. <clears throat> I like the paint and the interior and the finish and the engine upgrade from the barrel. But here she is, it's a 1946 Navion, North American Navion. So North American, right after the war, they finished production of the P-51 in 1946, which was a pity. But, um, and they went on to producing a small trainer that would satisfy the potential boom of pilots, like 250,000 pilots coming back from Europe who were pilots who wanted to fly in America. It actually never really happened. There weren't as many flying as they thought there would be. So this was designed for that market, but also for the, the military training market. And Navion built around 1,100 of them. And then they sold the company to Ryan in San Diego, who built the uh, Spirit of St. Louis plane for Lindbergh. And they went for production in various iterations. And the experts on watching this will know right through the Range Master and different planes up till 1976 when they stopped production. But this is a 46. This is a North American. This is the first year they built them. 250 were sold to um, the US government for military training. So we'll have a little bit of a look around it in detail. So engines. When this was built in 46, it had a 205 horsepower Continental in it, which isn't a lot. And you can see this patch right here. That's where the exhaust pipe would have come out back then. But this one has been upgraded. It had an event of some sort. It's in the logbooks in 1958 where it was damaged and then repaired and rebuilt as a B model. So there's no step on the front, even though it's still got the handhold here. Now it's, you get in from the back, it's got the bigger engine and we can look at the engine in my previously loosened cowling. This engine has zero hours on it. Well, it's got 14 hours on it. And it's a Continental E225. So it's 225 horsepower for takeoff, which isn't really that big, but it's big enough. And you can see a few strange things on it that aren't familiar with the 470 series of engines. The governor is back here, down low on the engine. Um, his is the oil reservoir for the hydraulics. We'll show you that in the cockpit when we're flying it. It's flaps and gear. And then the usual six cylinder horizontally opposed air cooled. And then if you look through here, I'll go around the front, you can see over the top of the case of the engine here, where my finger is, this gray area with this hydraulic line in is an added unit onto the end of the engine that makes this prop hydraulic. So it acts just like a conventional um, regular 182 prop, which is a nice upgrade for these. So that's under the hood. Oil cooler back here, cow flaps, very conventional. It would be very familiar, even though this is 75 years old. This plane could be owned and flown and used the way you'd own a Piper Arrow. And it's voluminous inside too. We'll have a look in there. Let me close her up. So without getting too specific on exact rivets and times and specs, the way I could perhaps on some of the Cessnas, we're just going to have a quick look around it. It's obviously been built by a military subcontractor because you can tell by the beefiness of the whole thing. It's very big, solid, heavy. Landing lights on the gear legs. It's got military looking tires on it, very strong, long gear legs. And these planes are also known for a very good short field capability. They can get out of short and soft field. And you can tell by this, look at the profile of that wing. That is like what you draw in your student wing lift diagram, a very curved top. And then even the underneath is curved and it lessens as it goes down the fuselage. So it's a very high lift wing, sacrifices a little bit of speed. Um, they cruise at about, it's all miles an hour inside. 
They cruise at about 140 to 150 miles an hour. That's like 128 to 132 knots. So it's sort of a little bit slower than a 182, uh, and it burns about 11 gallons an hour doing that. This is a counterweight for the aileron. All very sort of sturdy. Here's the rear step. They're climbing in. This is a handhold. This is added because it's a B. An A model wouldn't have had this. Correct me if I'm wrong. Hand goes in there. Foot on here. Up onto the wing. Don't step on the flap. It's got a plate for it. And then inside. So come on up and have a look. So getting in the front, you step into the back here into the, without having to stand on a seat. And then you just walk up the aisle. A four seat single with an aisle. Get in the front, and you're sitting quite close under this uh, canopy, under the fixed part of the windshield. So basic look at this, because we're going to fly it in another video. You'll see all the, um, what everything's doing. There's like a control panel here with master switches, pumps, rear stats, lights, a very retro yoke, which feels more like a sort of steering wheel in a, in a car from the era. Gear, out, up, in. Flaps, both hydraulic. This is the hydraulic pump. You have to turn that on. You'll get a light when it's running. You can use these things. The trim wheel is very small and can be stiff, but that's the trim wheel. And other than that, modernized. So it's got some King radios in it. There's one here that's being repaired, but it does have another King. And then just various engine analyzers, fuel flow gauges, ELT. Um, uh, this is a EDM 700. So a little bit of a more modern panel in it to make it sort of fit the era of our era, uh, but in a plane that's obviously 75 years old. So to close the canopy, I mean, obviously on the ground when you're taxiing, it's open like this and it's excellent for on a hot day when you've got like total ventilation. But to close it, you just reach back, turn the handle sideways, pull forward, over center it and lock. And you can perhaps see up here, the over center lock engaged. And now this is where it would be obviously when you fly. The, the Range Masters, the later versions of this, had a door here, like a Bonanza. And they had tip tanks on them too. So they didn't have this canopy. Because they say that a lot of the ladies of the era didn't like getting in and out of this version of the, of the Navion with the high sills in their skirts. So the door was more popular with the ladies uh, on the Range Master. Tell me if that's true or not on comments. Fuel. Quite simple actually in this. You fill it up from here only. There's fuel in both sides of the wing, but there isn't a cap over there. So you fill up this, it holds 39 and a half gallons, and it just, it just cross feeds over there on its own, and it just drinks from both at the same rate. The, the, um, the pressurized carburetor will return fuel back into that tank, but because they're combined, it doesn't really matter. So it just, the gauge will be accurate at all times. So this is 39 and a half, and then right there on the side of the fuselage, is another 20. So your selector in the cockpit, which we'll see later as well, it says main auxiliary. Two choices. So 39 and a half, 20, 59 and a half, 60 gallons, 11 gallons an hour, about five hour range in it. And you can add, if you go with bigger engines, 260 horses and you know various other versions of the 470 and the 520 and these as they kind of get upgraded through the years and you need more gas, you can put tip tanks on it, which hold 20 more each. So 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So they're capable of carrying a lot of fuel. But in this original configuration, if you're just buzzing around locally and you're not even using auxiliary, you just put it in here and you burn it from here. Okay, to start it, the, normally the radios would be off, but I'm gonna start it with them on because otherwise the mic's not live. So to start it, we've got... Over here. Battery, so that's on now, mic working. We'll turn on the battery. Generator, mixture in, throttle cracked, a little bit of boost, because it's a pressure carb, throttle back, mags on, starter button. And then so it's not confusing when we're flying. This is the hydraulic knob. You have to actuate the hydraulics to allow the flaps and gear to move. So uh, that's off at the moment. So I'm going to start it now. Clear! And we'll shut the canopy so that it's not noisy.
trim, good for takeoff. Mags. Okay, the run up, very conventional. Set the RPM at about 15, 1600 RPM. Left mag, right mag, left mag, both. Cycle the prop, which is hydraulic, as we saw. Prop, mixture itch, no flaps. Hydraulics on. Light to activate to, to show you that it's on. There's a gear unsafe light here showing the pump in transit, and there's three lights here for the three wheels. Okay, we're ready to roll. Classical traffic. Uh, North American, 9-2, correction, uh, 292 Mike Delta is departing 23 for a local flight, Placerville. Nobody on final. Liner up on the center line. If you go straight to full power, you get a lot of right rudder for takeoff, so I kind of just smoothly feed it in. She'll start feeling light at 60. The intercom is too loud. Gear coming up. All three. Mouthful pressure back to 23. RPM back. 23. Uh, very sensitive intercom. The 2300 RPM, a little bit of trim. Gear is up, gear is safe, hydraulics off. Mike Delta is on a left crosswind to left downwind for 2 3 at Placerville. Got a very solid, sort of reliable feeling to it, this plane in flight. Responsive, but feels quite heavy, but not really subjected to like turbulence and bobbing around as much as a smaller plane would be. And great visibility. On downwind, we want to start slowing it down to 100, which is white arc, which is gear speed. I'm easing back on the throttle. Going to 100. Hydraulics are on. Here coming down. We got two green. Pump is running. And we got a third green. We leave on the pump. Drop in. Flaps. From neutral to down. I'm going to use half flaps. About there. Placerville. Two Mike Deltas on left base, two three, full stop Plasville. Doing exactly 80 miles an hour. A little bit more flat. Two Mac Delta's on the final half half mile final for two two three full stop plasma. Yeah, 
Gear is down. Prop is in. Mixture is set. Flaps are down. Speed is correct. Okay. There's always a little bit of a burble over the end of the runway because it's on a cliff, like the edge, so I always want to go a bit further in in a plane I'm unfamiliar with. on the ground, idle, flaps. So, in conclusion, we had a little bit of a look around, flew it around the pattern a bit. Um, there are 1,400 Navions roughly left on the US registry. Uh, production stopped in 1961 of the Navion, not the Range Master, it went on into the 70s. But 61, there's Hurricane Clara, flattened the factory and they stopped production of it. So, it's a dying breed. I mean, this plane is 75 years old and it still flies like it's a, like it's a everyday practical plane. So this is Mark at Skywagons University. If you like the videos, subscribe on the little link and click on the bell for notification and there'll be a lot more videos like this. So thanks very much for watching.